Hey everybody, it's Colt with Bleep and Jeep. Today we're going to chop the top off the Samurai. We're going to take some inch and a half DOM tubing. We're going to bend it. We're going to notch it. I'm going to show you how to do it with an affordable set of tools. So stay tuned. This video is brought to you by the WD-40 Company. So we got her in the shop. Before I cut this thing off, I actually want to take a few measurements and kind of get some angles of what I want to do prior to taking the sawzall and just going to town. So this is one of my favorite tools that I use when I'm bending cage or tubing. It gives you, I don't know if you can see that okay, but it gives you the angle and then you can lock it down. So when I'm making a bend, I can figure out the angle, lock it down, and then take it to the bender and match it up. If you're a math wizard, you can probably figure out exactly what you need by just taking a few measurements. I'm not a math wizard, so I'll set this up, and I kinda wanna match what I believe is a samurai-esque look. I'm also gonna go up higher, about three inches, so I wanna come up about there. Now that I have the angle locked in, so I can take my tape measure and just get an idea here of how much I need and I'll add probably about a foot of scrap, six inches to a foot of scrap so that I know I'll have enough. So once I got that top length I came out this way and it was three foot to about here and the reason I'm going to go to about somewhere in here is because I will sleeve this so that I don't have to worry about matching this bend perfectly because if you look down it you can see that that front bend on the A pillar and this B pillar bend are completely different so it's a lot easier to just have your tube stop cut it have a fill in piece but you really don't want a sleeve on a cage unless you have a support going to that sleeve so this one actually has one in it if you look real close you can see it the goal is to make it to where you can't see it. We'll stop, sleeve it, and then put our B-pillar bar in. So something I should go over real quick so we're all on the same page. This is my A-pillar bar. This would be my B-pillar bar. You could call this or this your C-pillar. Another easy way to keep track of what you're doing, if you forget like I do all the time, is draw yourself a little diagram and then write down the dimensions before you start cutting anything. Get ready to go bye bye, Cage. What did I do? <laughs> That's a sweet convertible right there. So the next thing I got to do is just come in here and grind out all the extra.
So on a side note, I hadn't used my die grinder in a while. When I hooked it up to air, I couldn't get it to spin. So I took my WD-40 Easy Reach with the flexible straw, shoved it in there, gave it a little spray, and got it working. I really like the flexible straw because as the can gets low, I can hold it level and get a quality spray that I needed in the item. I know that'll make the tool guys mad, but let's be honest, this is cheaper and it works better. So day two into chopping up and rebuilding this cage. Tried to save you all a little agony because I was grinding on that thing for a solid five or six hours between my seven inch grinder, my four and a half inch grinder, a flap wheel, and even my die grinder to get into tight places. I am excited because today we're actually gonna bend some tube and I'm excited to show you guys this. This is an affordable bender. I've had this thing for quite a few years now. It has worked great for a hobbyist that does, you know, two to four cages and bumpers a year max. This thing is awesome. If I were to use it a lot more, maybe I would change this jack out to a, a electric or air operated hydraulic jack. If there's any other downside you could give it, I would say that it only has a 90 degree bend on it. But if you think about that, logistically, there's only two things I can think of that you would want to bend over 90 degrees. And that's an endo bar, which <laughs> maybe 10, 20 years ago, you wanted a nice pointy Begoinger sticking out there. But the you know we know now, we realize that that just murders all the air going into your radiator, so you try to square it off or do something different. The second thing, it would be a shock hoop. But there's so many companies out there now that buy their DOM in bulk that you can buy the pre-bent DOM shock hoop from these companies for what it would cost me, the average guy, to buy the DOM by itself. So that's kind of a no-brainer. And in that $300 range with a die, you're really hard pressed to find to find something in that cost in that price range that still bends quality. So this is what I call my cheap fabricating table. And with this bender, I have picked up a few other dies since this inch and a quarter or inch and three quarter, excuse me. I have this anvil, aka a railroad tie that I literally got for free. This Harbor Freight welding table that I picked up. For, I don't even remember it was I think it was actually given to me so this is actually new this is a affordable bender tube notcher and I used to use a Harbor Freight one the downside of that Harbor Freight one um, two things I had is one it never whole sawed straight I was always having to massage one side or the other of the tube with my flat disc and the other part is the actual shaft that the hole saw sits on is only in a brass bushing so you're always consistently I mean you're just constantly having to lubricate that thing to keep it from wearing out too fast where this one uses uh, needle bearings so I'm actually pretty excited to use this So, if you watched one of my last videos, you saw where I showed you how to put tire ballast in your tires, and it gives you great traction, but it adds well, quite a bit of weight in the front tires, and I, I couldn't get this thing in the garage, because every time I pulled it and it caught the edge of the concrete, it pushed me back the other way. <laughs> that water would slosh and shove me backwards, so... I'm gonna have to start it here and then I'll drive it in. So if you remember the piece of paper that I wrote down the measurements we took before we cut anything, I had almost two feet here and then three feet right here going across to where I'm gonna split it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a six foot piece to give myself six inches on each side. If you're unsure of how to set up your bender to your radius, then I would give yourself just a little more. You always want to figure in enough extra tube for scrap corners and making those adjustments.
So I like to use DOM for anything on the exterior of a roll cage. If I can afford it, I'll do DOM through the entire cage, but in this case, I'm going to use a true for the interior pieces that rocks won't touch. There is some things that I've seen where people have used poop pipe or whatever else, and I can tell you right now, I've made a cage out of poop pipe and it didn't hold up very well to rocks, but it did save my life. If you've got the money, I would go ahead and spend it on DOM and know that you are safe and protected. So normally I would just leave my chops up here while I'm cutting tube and bending it, but I want to set it down so you can get a good angle and see what I'm doing here. First thing I got to do is that looks like the last thing I did was inch and three quarter. So I got to take this off and put the inch and a half die in. So I'm getting ready to make my first bend. If you remember, we had already measured that first point when I had the cage on there, knowing that I wanted 23 and a half inches up to the top of the tube, and that was through the bend. So realistically, I can just give myself two feet here, and I'll have more than enough space in case, just in case I measured wrong or whatever, where I can make that bend and I can get my roof height, and then I can notch it to the exact roof height that I want. One other thing to remember with this bender, is when you're getting ready to bend you want to have this u-bolt tight now another thing i like to do is spray the die the roller and the die itself with the wd-40 easy reach with the flexible straw and what that does is that allows the tube to bend in there and it doesn't catch anywhere on it where it could scar or damage the tubing So I still had this angle set at 115 degrees on here. If you can see, if you can see that line, I hope you can, that's right there in line with the tube. So we know it's lined up exactly with the tube, but the thing is, is when steel relaxes, it actually has a kickback. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up about another five to 10 degrees. Every style of metal is a little bit different, but usually it's about an average of about a 10 degree kickback we're gonna get on that too. So I'm gonna come up a little bit more, relax it, make sure that it fits, and then I'm gonna come back up to that point and I'm gonna mark it right here on the die with a Sharpie so that I can match it with all my other bins. So it was a good thing I checked it because I actually had about 20 degrees of kickback there so I'm gonna to have to come up a little bit more to get the bend I want. Perfect. All right, so I got both my pieces bent. They match, they're the same lengths, the bends match. I am gonna go ahead and bend one more, and that's because I think right here, not from this point, but from up here, I wanna match that bend again, because I wanna make, you know, uh, an angry eyebrow. <laughs> so this is my $2 roll cage life hack. I go to the hardware store and buy some of those screw-in wood eyelets and I screw them into my ceiling and then I hang it from bungee cords. Obviously right now this is too tall, but I can set it down, get the measurement I want, get everything where it's set, get my marks, and then I can just set it up here back out of the way. I don't have to worry about it busting me in the face. And I can do it by myself without a second person helping me. So that's a plus. So I'm getting ready to set this down and measure it and I went ahead and measured this from the bottom of here to the top of here at 22 and a half inches 
which is exactly where I want the center of my tube to be. I went ahead and taped it, <laughs> taped it down here, and that way it'll stand up where I need it. So when I pull that down, I'll put a level up on this upper section of tube here. I'll have this sitting right in the middle of there. And then once I have this level, I can come over here and mark where I want to notch it at the A-pillar. Now I just got to do the same to the other side. So something to remember when you're setting this up is you want to get it as close as possible. The tighter the notches are on the tube, the better the weld's going to be. And with the weight of this size drill, it actually has some hang down on it. So instead of being perfectly flat here, I actually had to kick this in just a little bit to make it a uh, straight across cut. Once again, this is the simplest notch you'll ever make, just going straight through at a direct 90 degrees. It's more or less just making sure that the back end is straight to this end. That's it. The easiest way to make sure that you're straight here to here is just taking an angle finder, setting it here, and then setting it down here and making sure you're at 90 degrees and zero degrees here. So I did go ahead and throw a couple tacks on the front at the A-pillar and that's just so that this thing's staying a little stabler. A little stabler. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word. How about a little more stable? All I'm doing right now is just making sure that this is level, which I, I was just a little bit out. So right there is level and right there is the center of my tube. So what I want to do here, there's a couple ways you can measure this. but if I were to hold this right there, I can look right at the bottom of the tube and know that I need 22 and 3 quarter for the inside to the inside of my notch. And I could notch it just like that and take that measurement. Otherwise, you can also go from center of tube to center of tube and then just subtract down knowing that that's still going to be the inside of your notch. But the easiest way for me, if I can get away with it, is to just go inside a notch to inside a notch. So something I should have mentioned is coming off my A-pillar bar I did go ahead and level that out by just picking the rig up and moving it till I got it squared up and level. And that's how I wanted to start before I started doing this cage. That way I know I'm starting from a true level flat point. So all I did here was put my tape on the very inside lowest point of my notch, brought it down to 22 and 3 quarter and marked it. And that's where the closest side of the hole saw is going to be. So when I set it up in here, it's going to be on this side right there. Now, before I notch it, I got it lined up where the inside of my mark is on the inside of my hole saw. But you ask, how am I going to get it straight? Well, I'm going to take this inch and a half piece, set it here, take Ooh, that's dirty. Got that off. Take my level, set it here, and just straighten it out. Now, remember that this is a little bit off, so another thing I can do is hold this here and line it right up. And if you eyeball it, you can get it really, really close. Line it right up with, with the shaft that holds the hole saw and then you just tighten her down. There is such a thing as a fabricator's eye. You do want it as close as possible. You could spend all day here taking your angle finder and set it on here and take an angle finder and set it here and get it get it perfect, but the reality is you can get it, if you got a decent eye and you're not blind, you can get it really darn close, pop it through, and you're gonna save a lot of time. It's gonna be a lot faster. <laughs> So let me go over what I did real quick. 
and I measured from the floor all the way up to the top of the, to the top of the cage to make sure that the cage was level on both sides and it was the same height. We measured our B pillars. I've got them tacked in now. And what I did here is just like this is level and that side's level is I set it here, gave it a quick tack and then brought it in over here and gave it a quick tack. That's why a lot of times when you see them building roll cages, they got uh, ratchet straps because I'll just take a ratchet strap, put it up here and then go down to that corner and then ratchet strap it down. I'm going to go ahead and get a measurement from the bottom of the cage here to the bottom of the cage there and that's the same because I want to keep the exact same length or the same uh, width all the way to my B pillar. So once I get that measurement I'm going to match that for my upper B pillar for the roof. So I bet some of you were saying this whole time when I was using the bungee cords, why don't you use ratchet straps? Well, now you see why. <laughs> I need to save those for when I do all the cross bracing and to true this thing up. <laughs> where you kind of use the fabricator's eyeball. You get all your dimensions, you get all your numbers, you get everything as square as you can, you get all the, the angles where they're supposed to be, and then you stop and you get back and you look at it. Measure, check, measure, check, measure, check, then weld it together. So what I'm talking about, about after getting all your measurements, is using your eyeball and coming down and if you watch that B pillar, and let me get straight on it so you can see because I'm coming out at an angle. See how it came out the equal amount? If I keep my eye straight on it, it disappears at the same time. You know, you're obviously going to take your angle finder and you want to put it on the same side of the tube all the way around. So that's, that's one other trick you don't want to use this side of the tube here and then flip it around and use that side of the tube there if you're going to use this side then you just use this side and you're going to be on this side of zero on this side you'll be on this side of zero but that way you're using the same end of the angle finder when you go to get all your angles and try to true everything up so to make this all i'm literally going to do is just give it a tiny little bend here in the middle, get my measurement, which right there is four foot outside the outside of the tube. So that way if I accidentally give it a little too much bend or whatever, I still got plenty of tube to notch uh, for space there. So I'm starting to run low on DOM and I definitely want to keep DOM on the exterior of the cage. So this piece and every, Everything in here will probably be H-roof, and then that top piece is still DOM that we pre-bent earlier. So I just cut this, picked it up, and look at that. I'd forgotten when I bought this tubing, this H-roof, that I drove through a place where they are doing chip and seal. And now I have, see if I can get some some light in here so you can see in there come on focus there we go if you can see there's a little crusty chunk of that tarry rock and I don't want it to be shaking around in my cage for the rest of my life that's what you do to your worst enemy you know so I gotta figure out how to get it out <laughs> you guys got any ideas because I tried my big pry bar and it was too thick so I got it out this tiny little rock. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's all the bigger it was. But could you imagine that rattling around in your headache bar right in front of your face for your whole life of this cage? That would drop me, drove me nuts for sure. So I ended up finding this old broom handle 
shoved it in there, scraped it out, and was able to make it work. I'm going to have to remember to check all this a true from now on, every piece that I cut for it. Good thing this was the first one, and uh, make sure that none of it has any of that junk in it before I weld it in. So one thing I should go over before I bend this a true is that when you have seamed tubing, I try to keep it in this upper inside portion of the bend. And the only reason that is, is I have bent this stuff on the outside before uh, with my other bender that I used to have. And I've actually had the, the tubing actually split. And I'm not sure if it was just bad, it was a bad electric weld, or if it was because I had it on the outside. So ever since then, I've always kept it in the inner half, the inner upper half of it, the inside of your bender die. Oh, so you know how hard it is to climb into a roll cage and not grab the roll cage tubing? <laughs> I'm trying to reach for stuff, and, but I'm in. Anyway, so I went ahead and bent my piece and I didn't have any specific uh, angle that I wanted to do. I just gave it a couple clicks, got a little kink in it, and that's all I really wanted. So I'm going to, I and I was I was about an inch off of where I marked it for my bend. So I'm about an inch out of center uh, of each end of the tube. But that's fine, that's why I gave myself extra tube length. Now I went ahead and measured from my B pillar up, up to my A pillar here where I want this crossbar. I have my center line of my bend marked here and I have the center of my string on the center of that center line. I went ahead and marked the center of the dash panel too, and that way I know exactly where I want to be. So at this point, I just have to set this up where I want it, center it up, center up my bend, which you can tell now how far off I was from uh, center of bend here. So, right there. Because this is gonna be straight, this notch will be straight with this notch. All I need to do is get the right angle for those notches. This is one of those things that would definitely be helpful to have another person or two people, actually, one person on each side holding it. But, um, unfortunately, my family is at a volleyball game right now. So, they are watching that. And I hope they do good. And I hope I do good in here. <laughs> so, this is one of those notches that can really mess you up. And all I did was came in just a little bit, not a whole lot, to try to match that and match my marks on each side. This mark's a little bit farther out than this one. If I were to draw a straight line through this whole saw, that's what I'm getting. Now I'm going to bring it inside my marks, and same with this side. Once I do it, I want to bring it inside my mark because you can always take more out. It's a heck of a lot harder to put it back. Fortunately, I have plenty of the seam tubing, so we can, you know, if I mess up, we can make another one, but I like to do things the first time and then not have to backtrack and do them again. Oh yeah. You got a little bit of play in a notch, so I'm going to try to turn it out just a little bit to where it kind of falls in line with the end of this tube and that tube so I can use my bend where it'll fit just perfect. So it's getting pretty late, but uh, this is a perfect example why this stuff just takes time and why you want just a little bit extra when you notch. And you can always take a little extra out. If you look at this right here, I'll see if I can get the whole thing. See, I'm just a little bit off. And I was kind of guessing, guessing that notch, you know, because you really, you know, you're, you're getting as close as you can, but you just set that tube on there and then hope you can notch it. So I'll have to massage it out a little bit with the, with the uh, flap disc and then bring it down but it looks like maybe a 
eighth of an inch or a quarter inch or so. I think I'm for sure calling it a night now. It's starting to look like a rock crawler, much like a razor. It's day three on the old Sammy Cage cut chop rebuild here. I got up this morning, did a little cleanup in the garage, tried to sweep up the floor. It makes makes a lot of mess. You'd be surprised how much metal dust you get on the ground from cutting and grinding and and uh, even just little tack welds and whatever else, I don't know. But I know I had a pile of black boogers. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of uh, measuring, angle finding. You know, that's why I have all these ratchet straps everywhere and levels and my angle finder, making sure everything's nice and trued up. You know, I got enough here where I think I may burn this in and while it's all true. And then I can come in and do all my little pieces and then do the back. Where am I drinking, buddy? Couldn't hang, so I filled my glass and went to say farewell. I stood in the back, dressed in black, tearing up, turning up, hitting it up. Good God, awful freezing, drunk as hell. I cried, I'm coming for you, buddy. That's where I'm found. I'm a talking about hell fire. Oh, hell fire. Hell fire. Yeah, hell fire. That's where I'm found. I'm a talking about hell fire. All right, so I got my B pillar notched for the, for the back. Um, I guess my backrest B pillar. And I have to notch it out for this tube which is really just as simple as setting it straight and then notching this side for a tube. I'm not going to come into it because it's straight with it any farther than it is right there. Take my alignment bar here, get it straight, mark it, tighten it, drill it, and then it'll go right in. And that's all it is. And then you just notch the one side, don't notch the other side. All right, so I got it in, got it tacked in down here and up here. Wait, man, focus thing. That way you can see how good it uh, butts up. It's nice and tight. Should make for a decent weld. One other trick I've had, I'm, you know, a lot of this stuff, it, it just kill, it kills you in time because you're sitting there thinking about how it'll look, how you want it to look, and this blue tape for a few bucks you can really mess around with stuff tape things off and get some ideas and it works great comes right off just painters tape so just uh just another way i do it how do you guys do it now we're getting towards the back and i'm whipping out my trusty little true angle here and I'm just going to set it up here, kind of find the angle I want, which I kind of want to be about right there, and then tighten it down. And we go right back to the same process I did with those, where I bend it and match it and do it all over again. So, time to do that. So day four, into this build. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I spent a lot of time just running tape and everything else, but this is what I ended up doing for my A-pillar support. I made a slug. This is just a piece of inch and a quarter, 120 wall, and this is inch and a half. So basically now I have, you know, a quarter wall or 250 wall. I haven't drilled any of my plug welds or or the holes for my plug welds or anything like that. All I did was just set this up, push it in, slide it up in there. That way I have I have my sleeve inside my tubing. It's actually about this long, so it's about into there. So I have this whole thing supported. My crossbar is gonna come in off this point and I have it laid out right here. So now I know exactly where my kick downs are and then I can go ahead and mark 
for my notch. I'm going to give myself just a little bit extra because I am almost completely out of DOM. That's all I got left. So I better not mess this up. Oh yeah, starting to look like a buggy again. I went ahead and grinded a bevel on the edge of this. We have a hole drilled right up there. Already got my bevel here, got that welded. So all I did was weld both of the bung holes, I guess you could say, and then welded the seam together with it being beveled on both sides. Next thing I gotta do is take a grinder with a flap disc and we'll grind it. And there's one important step. I wanna show you how to do this. So this is the last piece of the puzzle to the exterior of this cage. I've already welded the sleeve in. Now we gotta go ahead and clean up the weld because I don't want it to look like I have a weld here and that I have a sleeve in here. So this is where a lot of people mess up. And this, I put a brand new flap disc on here. And when you go to grind this, when you go to clean it off, you work your grinder this way, 90 degrees of the tube up and down. It's real easy to go like this and go up and down or just sit here and grab the weld. And what that does is that's gonna leave low spots in your tube and you're actually gonna be able to see it. By doing this, it'll keep it nice and fresh and clean. My buddy Pat Helgeson showed me that. So I know it looks a little funny where I've been running it, but I promise you it's nice and smooth. You don't see a low spot. Now I do have a place right here where there's a little bit of a little bit of a gas bubble or air bubble. So I'll go ahead and fill that back in. Anytime you see a little piece, don't keep trying to grind and get it even lower. Just go back in your, with your welder and just spot those. And then you can come back and clean them up. And that's pretty much it. Now I just got to finish this up, get in my crossbars, a couple other little bars here and there. And, uh, and then we'll look at the finished product.